Oh boy, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to All Things Equilateral. You guys, when we dreamt up the yellow prompt for Chick Litathon 2021, Jesse, Trish, and I had no idea that there were so many yellow books. Um, I pillaged a few off my shelf. I mean, there's more up there, but I thought I'd go through just what's on my shelf and what has not shamefully been read yet by me. So. I am trying really hard for Chickalitathon to not purchase any books. Um, Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This is Nicola Yoon's husband. And I mean, look at how pretty it is, the sprayed edges. Let's see what it looks like underneath. Oh, Tiffany Blue. Um, this book I have been wanting to read for, well, since it came out. Uh, Frank Lee has two names. There's Frank Lee, his American name, and there's Song Min Lee, his Korean name. No one uses his Korean name, not even his parents. Frank barely speaks any Korean. He was born and raised in Southern California. Even so, his parents expect him to end up with a nice Korean girl, which is a problem, since Frank is finally dating the girl of his dreams, Brit Means, who is smart and nerdy like him, but she's white. So this sets up a fake dating trope. And I have been dying to read this book. So it's yellow. Could this make it to my TBR? It certainly could. I'm gonna do a backlist book right now by one of my favorite authors, Huntley Fitzpatrick. I think you guys remember my life next door a few years ago. It was so popular on booktube and I think bookstagram especially. Look at the yellow, can you guys see it? I don't know, there's like a glare, but um, yellow and white kind of reminds me of like, what do they call them, awning stripes, ticking stripes? I'm not even sure. Uh, for Tim, it wouldn't be smart to fall for Alice. For Alice, nothing could be scarier than falling for Tim. But Tim has never no been known for making the smart choice, and Alice is starting to wonder if smart is always right. When these two crash into each other, they crash hard. So an unexpected romance between two a kind of unlikely partners, if you will. I have not read this book yet. I loved My Life Next Door, um, and I have not yet read what I thought was true either. I think it's time. Like, the weather is warmer and we've got that patio furniture up there the pandemic is still raging so i'm not going anywhere shop your shelves what do you guys think should i pick up this one i think it's time that one might definitely make my tbr this book i've actually read i know shocking sophie's read something on her shelf a monster calls it's kind of yellow it's by patrick ness and he wrote this book actually he picked up where the original author left off. It's won a Carnegie Medal and a Cake Greenaway Medal. It was a New York Times Book Prize finalist, uh, a notable book on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, and the name of the original author is Siobhan Dowd. And um, she started writing it for, I think, her son, and I believe the publisher asked Patrick to pick up um, after she passes away. The book is about a little boy and this monster that comes to him. There's also a graphic novel that I think Kat has upstairs in her room that's also really, really good. So I don't remember if this is really considered middle grade, but definitely YA, and it's one of my very favorite, favorite heart-tugging stories. Okay, another Patrick Ness book. Apparently, I went on a Patrick Ness buying spree. It's called More Than This, you guys. I love the graphic nature of this cover. Um, this is about Seth. He drowns, he's desperate and alone. But when he wakes, naked, thirsty, starving, 
but alive. And where is he? The streets seem familiar, but everything is abandoned, overgrown, covered in dust. He remembers dying, his skull bashed against the rocks. Has he woken up in his own personal hell? Is there more to life or perhaps this is afterlife? So I know this is one, look at the, isn't that cool? I just love the way this cover looks. Honestly, this was a cover by. Um, I love stories about afterlife. I like stories where we can see a character grow after a tragic accident. Um, so I know this one got kind of meh reviews, but I haven't unhauled it for a reason. And that's because it, it hooks me. I'm genuinely curious. So potential there, maybe. This book smacks of summer. <laughs> Don't date Rosa Santos, right? We've got the yellow and the yellow spine. I mean, this looks so adorable. Um, Rosa, Rosa Santos is cursed by the sea. At least that's what they're, that's what they say. Dating her is bad news, especially if you're a boy with a boat, but Rosa feels more caught than cursed. Caught between cultures and choices between her abuela, a beloved healer and a pillar of her, their community and her mother, an artist who crashes in and out of her life like a hurricane. So multi-generational, little magic realism. I mean, I'm there, right? I have been dying to read this book and every summer I'm like, I'm gonna pick up Rosa Santos and I don't, chick lit -a Isn't it funny to go through these shelves <laughs> of mine and go, there are literally so many books that I've yet to read. Um, speaking of, Sally Rooney, Conversations with Friends. Uh, Francis is 21 years old, cool-headed and observant, a student in Dublin, an aspiring writer. At night, she performs spoken word with her best friend, Bobby, who used to be her girlfriend. When they're interviewed and then befriended by Melissa, a well-known journalist who's married to Nick, an actor, they enter a world of beautiful houses, raucous dinner parties, and holidays in Brittany. So, a group of friends. My goodness, is this a university setting? So it could definitely fit uh, two of our prompts, yellow, obviously, and then university setting because she's 21 and still a student. That works for me. The next book, I'm ashamed to admit it, has sat on my shelves forever. I think Kat read it and I think she kind of gave it a, eh, what I call the meh thumb, right? Neither good nor bad. I, use that all the time in my distance learning videos and in-person classes, but Unexpected, The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. Um, I have this on my yellow shelf, maybe because the little Morgan Matson author um, spine thing is yellow. It's mostly yellow, kind of green too. I don't know. Um, the, oh, oh underneath the jacket, it's definitely yellow. Oh, I never noticed this, <laughs> did you guys? I love when book jackets do that. That's really cute. Um, it's about, let's see, you guys probably all know what this is about and you've probably read it already, but uh, Andy had it all planned out. When you're a politician's daughter, it's pretty much raised yourself. You learn everything can be planned or spun or both, especially your f your future. So all of a sudden a scandal rocks her family and Andy has to kind of rethink her future. The thing about it is, look at how thick it is. It's like I'm holding up a Cassandra Clare book. I don't know, contemporaries seem to be getting longer and longer and it's not a good trend. <laughs> I want a short, romantic happily ever after kind of story in my contemporaries and my romances so yeah can you feel it <laughs> probably not that one <laughs> is that what you're thinking um this book a uh, novel by tiffany jackson grown i've heard nothing but really good things about it it is gold and just gorgeous kind of plain underneath but this is about Corey Fields. Corey Fields is dead. When Enchanted Jones wakes with blood on her hands and zero memory of the previous night, no one, the police and Corey's fans included, has more questions than she does. All she really knows is that this isn't how things are supposed to be. Corey was Enchanted's ticket to stardom. 
Before there was a dead body, Enchanted was an aspiring singer struggling with her tight-knit family's recent move to the suburbs while trying to find her place as one of the few black girls in high school. But then legendary R&B artist Corey Fields spots her at an audition and suddenly her dreams of being a professional singer takes flight. You guys know how much I love kind of celebrity-themed um, books and especially books with music and in them. So that could be the answer right there. Aisha, at last, this cover is gorgeous. It is a paperback, which I love because it's more portable, but look at that gold coming off of it. It's kind of goldish yellow. Aisha Shamsi has a lot going on. Her dreams of being a poet have been set aside for a teaching job so she can pay off her debts to her wealthy uncle. She lives with her boy boisterous Muslim family and is always being reminded that her flighty younger cousin Hafsa is close to rejecting her hundredth marriage proposal. Though Aisha is lonely, she doesn't want an arranged marriage. Then she meets Khalid, who is just as smart and handsome as he is conservative and judgmental. She is irritatingly attracted to someone who looks down on her choices and dresses like he belongs in the seventh century. So this, um, sounds like, oh yeah, a modern day Muslim pride and prejudice for a new generation of love. You had me at pride and prejudice, right? Uh, maybe I should do, you know, I should do this, you guys. I should do pride and prejudice retellings. Hold that thought. Helena Hunting's Meet Cute. You guys have seen this cover. I think it's adorable. Kaylin Flowers was always calm, rational, and controlled until she ended up sprawled all over Daxton Hughes, the former actor she totally crushed on as a teenager. Then she did the unthinkable. She became a mortifying fangirl in five seconds flat, which may or may not have included professing her undying love. <laughs> Picture Sophie meeting Colin Firth. This would happen. Um, and oddly, he didn't run away. So again, an adorable literal meet cute could be good yellow on the cover. I've heard nothing but fantastic things about this series, and this one is yellow. So take a hint, Danny Brown. Um, this follows, I think, three sisters, the Brown sisters. Am I right, Booktooth? Yes, yes, you are. Um, she wants, uh, Dan Danica Brown knows what she wants, professional success, academic renown, and an occasional role in the hay to relieve all that career-driven tension, but romance, been there, done that, burned the t-shirt. So Danny asked the universe for the perfect friend with benefits, someone who knows the score and knows their way around the bedroom. That just sounds like, mm. And then the last one is actually one that I mentioned in our announcement video. It's Trisha Dollar's float plan. I mean, look at this cover. It smacks of summer. Since the loss of her fiance, Anna had been shipwrecked by grief until a reminder goes off about a trip they were supposed to take together. Impulsively, Anna goes to sea in their sailboat intending to complete the voyage alone, but after a treacherous night's sail, she realizes she can't do it by herself and hires Keen, a professional sailor, to help. And so, yeah, they meet. And I know some of you have mentioned it, my dad, used to have a sailboat and um, I spent my summers from the time I was about, I don't know, 14, like high school summers, sailing with him. He'd always take a week off and we'd sail all around. We lived in Massachusetts at the time, so all around Cape Cod. Um, so sailing's always near and dear to my heart. And uh, I'm curious, I said in my announcement video, I have not yet read a Trisha Dollar book, but there's so many of my friends who have you know similar tastes to me. They love her. Maybe I will too. So you guys, those are all the yellow books that were on my shelf. See, shop your shelves. I think later I may stop by the bookstore, but I promise not to buy any more yellow books or any books at all, because I think I have enough here, don't you? So what book with yellow on the cover are you going to read for Chiclitathon? Let me know down below. Oh, I forgot. I don't know where it is. Um, I think it might be up in Cat's Room. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. That, you guys, if you haven't read it, it's yellow. It takes place in Hawaii. Hate to love to, ugh. It's so funny and so, so good. 
it's definitely my favorite Christina Lauren book. Their other book too that is probably right up there is Love in Other Words. That's more of a women's fiction book, but oh, it has my heart. And it's also yellow gold. So two more recs from me. Let me know, what are you gonna be reading? And hey, click subscribe, hit the bell icon. You guys know the drill. I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, bye.